joined again by tea or coffee, your favorite breakfast show. Information, education, and entertainment program values that we do not compromise on. And talking about education, we're discussing self-medication on tea or coffee this morning. Now, some of you, you know, um, you know, um, they like popping pills, you know, just I have a slight headache and you pop pills anyhow. <laughs> this conversation is actually for you because it actually can be dangerous. Now, you've got a headache, you take a pain relief medicine, you have a fever, you take some drugs that you have heard works wonders <laughs> or have used some time ago. This is what a lot of people do and even advise other people to do and it is called self-medication. Self-medication is defined as the selection and use of medicines by individuals to treat self-recognized or self-diagnosed conditions or symptoms. If you fall in this category, then this conversation is definitely for you. Self-medication without proper instructions from a doctor can land such a person in big trouble. It can cause more harm than good to the body of the individual. For instance, according to Dr. Aaron, a consultant neurosurgeon at a hospital in India, a 47-year-old man who used to get recurrent headaches got into the habit of popping paracetamol frequently. The man believed that it relieves pain but, this, but did this without any medical advice. After some time, he started becoming weak. He already had a mild liver problem and didn't know that paracetamol should not be taken by liver patients. Ultimately, he developed severe liver failure and died. This is one of the many instances when self-medication when self-medication went awfully wrong. Now, this conversation, you know, is a very sensitive one and is one that requires a lot of education and information. And, and you know, um, thankfully and fortunately to us, we are joined in the studio by Dr. Binga Adebayo, who will be helping us get into the education, get in, helping us to unpack some of the dangers around self-medication. Now, Dr. Binga Adebayo is a physician and founder and Chief Executive Officer of Living Health International, um, a health solution and consulting firm based in Nigeria. He is a consultant on health communication as well as health wellness solutions to many organizations and government parastatals in Nigeria. He's always seeking for new and innovative ways to communicate and to, co to communicate proper, proper health utilizing old and new media. We have just a person to have us in the studio, uh, just the person in the studio to help us unpack this conversation. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Nadia. Thank you. I have to say, I love your suit. <laughs> I love the pocket square and the tie. It just goes. Thank I'm you. with you. I have to. <laughs> How are you doing this I'm morning? good. I'm good. Good suit. Thank you. All right. So on self-medication. Now, before okay. the cameras came on, I was telling you that. Um, so yesterday, I was actually going to get anti-malaria drugs, right? Because I'm feeling like, ah, you know, the rainy season is here and all this, you know. Um, and I was actually going to ask my grandmother, who's a nurse, you know, for some advice on using um, anti-malaria drugs. So I've been hesitant to use anti-malaria drugs because I'm like, ah, you know, you know, for instance, I hear malaria drugs don't work well with vitamin C and I drink a lot of vitamin C daily and things like this. So let us start, let us, let us give a background from your perspective, right? We've given a, a brief definition of self-medication, but from your professional standpoint, what is self-medication? Yeah, the definition is what you've given it, is what it is. Mm. It's, it's where somebody that is not a medical professional um, tries to, based on their own understanding of their feelings or make a self-diagnosis mm. and then goes ahead to treat uh, to attempt to treat that diagnosis. Mm. In, 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 in not, that may not be some, it's, it's part of normal health seeking behavior. Mm -hmm. if, if you think something is wrong with you, you're going to want to try to do something about it. <laughs> right. But therein lies the, the dilemma of doing the right thing. And that's why self medication can be dangerous. The, that you have an headache does not necessarily mean, or that you have fever, your mm -hmm. body is off, like your, your scenario, yeah. does not necessarily mean that you have malaria. Mm -hmm. Hunger can cause malaria. Hmm. Viruses can cause malaria. So mm -hmm. the best bet for you to do was maybe to take uh, a, a, an anti-fever an anti medicine, so mm -hmm. like paracetamol that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And if you take that for two, three days, so if it's a viral illness, if it's something that will go by itself or something that is not dangerous, and then you will not be okay. But the challenge is 
how does someone that doesn't have medical training make a proper diagnosis? Mm -hmm. So if you if you don't have health training, you're not a health practitioner. You're, I'm not necessarily saying doctor. Now you're not mm -hmm. because we we recognize that there must be a, some sort of tax shifting. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough doctors in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, if you <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, you're here. <laughs> we don't. We, we, yeah. we, 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 see, we, and the few that we have, sadly, they are leaving. Mm -hmm. So we recognize that there's a need, not everybody mm -hmm. in the one village, in one remote area, they're all mm -hmm. going to see doctors. So we need to do some training of some there are people that they can attend to the health. So we have community health extension workers. We have all kinds of people mm -hmm. that we can we can help. So it's to help people come to the proper diagnosis and then do the right thing mm -hmm. to themselves. But uh, I'm happy you've spoken about malaria because it's very rampant. That is where a lot of people use medicines, abuse medicines, mm -hmm. abuse antibiotics. They just say, oh, this is what mm -hmm. happened to my friend. When he had this, it's what he used. This is what he used. You too. <laughs> Go ahead and use it. And that can lead to it has led can be to a lot of problems dangerous, can right? it, can, it can yeah all right so let's talk about why people self-medicate very quickly and it's very interesting and you know let's um i'd like to contextualize this mm. to home to nigeria what is going on at home mm. you know you know you've just highlighted that like like doctors are leaving the country and then you know community health experts have been so is this a reason why people are maybe self-medicating within the context of nigeria because there's nobody to medicate for them not necessarily it, I, like i said i think it's part of the normal health seeking behavior mm. if something is wrong with you you you'd want based on your own understanding of what you think is wrong with you. You want, want to go and do something about it. Mm -hmm. And even self-medication, if we want to expand the term, we can expand it to even to use of alcohol. So okay. somebody is not feeling okay. Because alcohol, alcohol contains a drug. Yeah. I think the last time I was there, that yes, was talking about that's what you <laughs> dealt with. <into. laughs> so the person yeah. so wants to self-medicate. So it's a, it's a form of self-soothing, mm -hmm. getting yourself to feel good, to feel okay. So you have a headache. And you've seen that when you go have an headache, the doctor says, it's okay, yeah. please use prostamol. And that may not be, using prostamol when you have a headache may not be a problem. Mm. So, and that's why when you see the adverts of those um, um, drugs, it's why right over the counter drugs. That's why we have over the counter mm. medicines. Things that if you have a rash on your skin, if you proper, and that's the challenge now, mm. is to make a proper diagnosis of that rash right if you don't make a proper diagnosis of that rash and you go and use something else so that's why i said after three days if you're not seeing an improvement it's not getting better now go for a proper because if you use the wrong cream on a rash if you have an eczema for instance right. and then you go and use a steroid cream which is what a lot of people do they mm. go and get any of the steroid creams about and put it there that actually you have um, a tinea you have a, a what ring warm mm. and you now go and get uh, one of these steroid creams, mm -hmm. the examethasone, and so on, you mm -hmm. put it on it. It may make you look as if it's going, but you're actually making it ten years worse. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem with self-medication is, mm -hmm. if you are, if you do not make the proper diagnosis, you've not got the right diagnosis, and you use something, you may actually use something that may seem as if it's working, but it's not working. Like mm -hmm. the person that is, the story you read, or someone that has liver problems mm -hmm. and was using prostamol, your doctor, after checking you probably have noticed that hmm, this person has this kind of issue let's do this and you, you are not meant to use medicines long term mm. I know people that pop that's a very common they just yes. pop prostamol yeah. anytime you just pop mm. it or they mix it with something or they, no mm. we want to be careful to make self diagnosis and then prescribe self treatment or the doctor even have prescribed something for you in the time past mm -hmm. does not mean that because you feel that same symptom again just it's go and the pop same thing that it's the same thing you know, yeah. it's, it's not going to work. Yeah. So go see your healthcare provider and you'll be better for it. Right. Okay, so now pharmacists have been accused, you know, some pharmacists have been accused of encouraging self-medication for people that are coming in to buy pills. Maybe, you know, for profits reasons, you know, maybe, you know, they just, yeah, yeah, take this pill and go, that kind of thing. So how true is that? You know, um, you know how can a pharmacist it really, can a pharmacist diagnose and can a pharmacist, can, can a pharmacist with said diagnosis actually um, um, suggest medication for a patient? Well, um, I think first it may be unfair to just broadly say pharmacists. Some pharmacists. Uh, <laughs> you know, yes, we, we know that there is a problem of um, task allocation and people tough fighting in Nigeria healthcare space. Mm -hmm. So people are doing more 
than they are trained to mm. do, more, more than they are, they are should be able to do. So a pharmacist should be able to give over-the-counter drugs. But a pharmacist, by their training, does not understand, fully understand disease processes and the various things that can happen with this. But they know what this drug can do mm -hmm. and maybe the side effect of these drugs. But the job of making a diagnosis of a condition, having clinical history, having lab support, mm -hmm. it's not the job of a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. It's the job of a physician, right? right? So. But can, we, we would be right to say pharmacists are driving. I don't think so. Yeah. But I, I've seen some. I've been to some pharmacies where somebody comes in. I, I was there. Maybe the pharmacist doesn't know that I'm a physician. Mm -hmm. And then somebody comes in. I say, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then the pharmacist say, Okay, why that test? Okay, then it's typhoid. I think that's wrong. That's mm -hmm. that's malpractice. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm, I'm, of course, as a physician, I know that why other test is a useless test for diagnosing mm -hmm. uh, typhoid fever. We don't need that to diagnose. That, we diagnose typhoid fever. As a, it's a clinical diagnosis, something that based on history, based on examination. But a pharmacist is not trained mm -hmm. to do that. So mm -hmm. it's a physician that yes. has been trained uh, by virtue of his training. So it's not about the doctor is better than a pharmacist mm -hmm. or a pharmacist is yeah, inferior are to a doctor. Roles. There are different roles. Mm -hmm. and all roles working together can deliver better care to uh, the patient. But like I've said, we don't have enough professionals. Even mm -hmm. pharmacies, maybe we have more pharmacies. This is a very dire problem. It's, it? it's a big problem. And you won't know it's a problem until it, it hits so close on to you. That we, we, mm. are la are, we are training physicians. And I think it's a, it's a crazy thing. Like Nigeria spends a lot to produce physicians. Wow. Government heavily subsidizes the training of physicians. It's a no-brainer for you to do your best to retain those physicians. And then mm -hmm. you now lose them on a cheap to other countries. And so it's fine. What we need to do is I think we need to train other people. Mm -hmm. We need to have a class of people in rural areas. Even if we, even in America, even the best of nations, they give incentives for people to practice in rural areas, and they now have different classes of healthcare providers to provide health for people. Mm -hmm. We need to use what we have to get what we can. Mm -hmm. We can have a cadre of people that can diagnose malaria properly and treat it. treat it. They have the algorithms, they have the charts that tell you this plus this plus this. With this test, they can do a pinprick test, do a rapid diagnostic test, and just because 60% of people that will be ill, which is why some people misdiagnose and treat everything is malaria. No, everything is not malaria. Mm -hmm. You can have fever, especially in children. It could be a viral thing. So don't say because your child has fever, uh, you just give pastime or you just give anti-malaria. So mm. do the proper thing. If a child has fever, we tell you to do basic things. You can give prostamol because we don't want that child to have to convulse. We don't want that child. So you give prostamol and then take the child to your nearest health center so that your child could be treated. So I don't think we can say pharmacies are driving yeah. self-medication, but everybody needs to know their roles mm. and abide by their roles. Pharmacist does his job as a pharmacist. The nurse does their job as a mm. as a nurse. We have clinics where as can be run by nurses to that make mm. basic diagnosis. Just mm. basic diagnosis. And what you think is is more than what you can handle, please send the person higher up the chain. Yeah. And that's the sense of primary health care. Yeah, right. I love how you're actually I love how you're really breaking this down for us this morning. Now let's get into now you know some viewers watching this show this morning will probably think uh, -uh self medication is like first aid. You know, self-medication self is basically first aid that, uh, you know, like, you know, tea or coffee, we don't know what we're saying. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like, uh, if I have a headache, uh, you know, pop or uh, pain relief kills. What is the fundamental difference between first aid and self-medication? Properly administered self-medication may actually be first aid. What is first aid? First aid okay. is just the immediate care you give to someone. Okay. Uh, you, you want it to prevent loss of life, you want to uh, prevent severity of an injury. And about the thing about even first aid is that 
there must be training. So, mm -hmm. so if you can make the proper diagnosis, if you can know that this is what is happening, and this is what I should do to arrest the situation, then of course, mm -hmm. for, it's, it's, so medication, uh, self-medication happens when you do it to yourself. But first aid, can, uh, if something happens to me and you have been trained, if I suddenly start convulsing now, you should be able to do something as mm -hmm. first aid for me. I might not be able to do anything for myself. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing about it is that a lot of our people, the things that they do are counter, they they are the, the, the exact opposite of what they should do, yeah. right? Yeah. So, for instance, some, if, I, if I eat my leg against something and it starts to swell, the, in this environment, the initial response of most people is to do what? Is to put metolatum. All oh, right, actually. <laughs> they rub it. To rub it. <laughs> and that's the worst thing for you to do. Because mm. it's, it's very hot, isn't it? You, right? you, what we want you to do is actually to put ice. Mm. It's to put the ice pack, not to put metolatum. Mm. So first aid is what you do to reduce the severity of an injury. It could be self-administered. It could be administered by somebody else. But first aid saves lives. Okay. So people need to know what to do in certain scenarios to help people either by themselves if you are choking there, there's, there's what to do mm. if a child is convulsing there's what to do mm. to help that child mm. or if even is an adult it's not to to pour water pour water <laughs> lift him up don't let him put his teeth together people mm. do all kinds of crazy yeah. things or they put spoon in their mouth and break and that is a norm because like that is for instance that is the education that we've learned that oh when someone is convulsing don't let their mouth their jaw lock put spoon and all of that but that's not correct it's it's absolutely it's wrong wow people pour palm oil and so yeah. so first aid must be based on proper knowledge, mm. proper training to know that if this is happening this is what I should do. Mm. A child is convulsing doesn't mean you urinate on the child. Some people urinate, actually urinate on the child or, or put the feet of the child into fire. All kinds of crazy stuff. Wow. So first aid is the immediate care you should give to someone to prevent harm and that may include medication. We have some essential medicine that we think people should have. Mm. In their home, we should have uh, an emollient, something if you have a bone, something you can put mm. on the bone to make it to suit while you go right. to now get proper care before you get proper, proper care. You press, press them all. It's a good thing yeah. to have at home. Hunger can cause headache. <laughs> <Just gotta eat. laughs> Food is a good thing to have at home. So things, a different yeah. thing. But if you're having persistent headache, you should not just don't be popping right. uh, past them all and just be Very doing all kinds of stuff. So, okay. I, I think you want to ask something. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was just going to say, as Christians say, uh, um, people perish for lack of knowledge. So, it's essentially, um, first aid, um, self-medication can be um, first aid with the proper information and knowledge to address a particular thing, right? If you make the, pro the, the, the bottom line is, has the proper diagnosis mm, been made? Right. But if you are, if you, if would we'll advise, there are some medicines that should not be part of self-medication. Right. One of those medicines is antibiotics. Very, very strong. You should medication. never use antibiotics without the prescription hmm. of a physician. You shouldn't self prescribe antibiotics. antibiotics. You shouldn't. Okay. And if a physician has prescribed or a caregiver has prescribed somebody authorized to do so, I prescribe antibiotics to you, make sure you finish the, med the dose. Because yeah. antibiotic resistance is a big problem all over. Mm. You, should, you should be careful of all this uh, staphylococcus, all this bogus diagnosis mm. that people come up with a staphylococcus you have this is this you have this is that and, and then but when you say people coming up with this that like who are the people is it doctors is it nurses like who are the people that quacks, come up with this? quacks 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 and people themselves mm. um making assumption because it, like it happened to my friend mm -hmm. uh, mm. also people believing that it's cheaper it's cheaper to to treat yourself or do something for yourself. They are afraid okay, to go to the hospital. They are afraid to, and so they do the wrong thing. So you you are not trained to make the proper diagnosis. So anything that goes beyond first aid with proper knowledge, mm -hmm. right? First aid that is based on knowledge, not first aid that is based on on meats and, yeah. and, and, and all kinds of wrong uh, or sentiment. Uh, even. Yeah. yeah. So first aid that is based on proper anything more than that, please see your physician yeah. or see your caregiver. Let me not say physician because, like I said, physicians are not everywhere. <laughs> not everybody in Nigeria is going right. to see a physician, right. but like, they can see caregivers. Yeah. Right. Let them see that. Yeah. All right. So now I want to talk about a first aid that is within Nigerian context. Mm. And Agbo, 
Okay. I go jedi and okay. things like that, you know. And when um, for international um, um, viewers watching, I'm talking about herbal medicines, as in traditional medicines. Traditional medicines are it's almost like a go-to first aid in in a lot of homes. Let me put it like that in Nigeria. Is that dangerous or does it actually work? Well, I, I first like to say that I recognize that for the vast majority of people, we are not the primary, when we say alternative medicine, we say so much medicine, but the vast yeah. majority of people in Nigeria, they are caregivers, uh, the alternative hmm. medical practitioners, unfortunately, like I said, we don't have enough caregivers. It's when something has, they tried, mm -hmm. it hasn't worked, that they now come they now come to the to, 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 or try to talk to a doctor yeah. and stuff like that. You mentioned something, that disease that they call JD mm -hmm. there's nothing like that known to medicine. You know, I, I learned that last week, but please get into it. <laughs> there's no <laughs> disease known to medicine. Yeah. Uh, what they call pile, you know, it's not what we know as pile. So, mm -hmm. like your back is paining you, you have low back pain, you cannot urinate properly, you're a woman, you have menstrual pain, you eat too much sugar, or you have enough. Oh, God, God, there, there's no. So, that's, that's the challenge. Mm. Uh, medicine. Has passed through those phase, that phase of, of you just doing anything, concocting things. There was a time when people believed in medicine, in conventional medical practice, that you needed to. What is wrong with you is if you have too much bile in your mm. system, you have too much this, or you, or they actually use leeches to suck people's blood, mm. or they believe that somebody's head was a problem. They but did so those things don't work. They don't work. Interesting. They, 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 we, I will be reticent to quickly say they don't work. I'd just like to say that they are dangerous. Okay. Because we don't know what is there. Mm -hmm. we, we know, for instance, the anti-malaria drugs that we use, uh, the artemisinin-based uh, drugs now. We know that the compound, that artesunate, the artemisinin that is inside it, has been used in China for thousands of years, right? And they've used it for different things. Right. But we now isolated and say this thing is active against malaria, right. did test to know that this is the dose. This is how you use it. That something is quote and unquote natural does not mean it's not dangerous. Right. Okay. You know, another worry I have about things like Agbo, you know, is that you can't really measure, you know, you know, for instance, with anti malaria pills, you can say like take two twice a day or something like that. But Agbo Jedi, you know, you'll see people point this like up, go, 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 go. And you know, they there's nothing it. that doesn't have side effect. Okay. Nothing. Even if you take too much water, mm. the side effect, you go and wee wee. That's the side effect of sticking to it. So there, there's really nothing that cannot be dangerous. Huh? Right. There's nothing that cannot be dangerous if misused. Right. If even like vitamin, vitamin C that you said that you take a lot of vitamin C, I'll be wary of taking too much vitamin C. Mm. Because too much vitamin C will give you kidney stones. Okay. Right? Okay. So there's really nothing that is so good yeah. that doesn't have... Okay, let, let me get your advice real quick. So I take vitamin C anytime I'm feeling like fatigued and, you know, I don't want to stop working, you know. Um, um, <laughs> the producer is telling me to stop. <laughs> but I, I, I need your advice, you know. So I take vitamin C, for instance, if I'm feeling fatigued, and if I start feeling fatigued, I then start taking like 1,000 grams, you know, the one that dissolves and things like that. Or I'll take like two a day or something like this because I want... I, I, in my head, I'm, I feel like I'm strengthening my immune system. Is that wrong? It's not correct. Okay. Vitamin C is not the proper medicine to strengthen the immune system. It doesn't. So okay. I, I think we're even going to wow. another discussion altogether when people talk about strengthening immune system. Yeah. Strengthening oh, immune okay. System. See, yeah. we live at the end of the Okay. It's not. When we talk about your your immunity is determined by two things: your cell, the cells in your body, and then what those cells are produced. So okay. that's the antibodies, antibodies that your system. Okay. What you need to strengthen it is just to be healthy. And your body gets exposed to these things, they react to this, and just be healthy, just eat normally. So a lot of people, the, the multivitamin sin, sin is, is a huge scam, a dangerous scam. Are you serious? So, so when, you, when you buy all these multivitamins, you, yeah. are just, it, you can have what we call hypervitaminosis. You can have too much, it's like the fat-soluble vitamins. They can oh take goodness. too much in your system and give you problems. And those vitamins actually don't help. They yeah. don't, they, they eat normally. My mind is being blown right now, if you, know, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but please keep so going. I, but it, it, it's a huge scam. Hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no, that you buy this, use this, use this thing. It's, it's Chicken of long life is not true. Mm. Eat well, rest well, exercise, sleep well. Okay, how about zinc? How huh? about zinc? There is a dose of zinc. 
Okay. You need zinc. We need all those trace eminence. Yes. We need selenium, zinc. Mm. That's why I just said eat well. Okay. And if you need supplements, your doctor will tell you. Work with your doctor about it. So okay. if you are not eating well, so I'm we about to make you my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant women need yeah. supplements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they are they're not treating a baby. A lot of people have been issued they are deficient right. while they enter pregnancy. So we say to pregnant right. women, take supplements. A woman in menopause, we need supplements. Right. So if you are 60 years old, 50 years old, and you're not taking something, a supplement that is high in folic acid, you may be inviting cancer. Wow. So we, we need to be Right. The, the supplement field is a, this is it. <laughs> wow. So that's part of self medication. Yes, apparently. That I'm, is dangerous. Yeah. Thank that you. is dangerous. And yeah. it's fueled by a desire. People want to right. be well. Yeah. There's no, you cannot buy health in a pill. Mm. You can't buy health in a pill. Mm. We, we produce health in our daily activities, our in lifestyle. our lifestyle, mm. in what we do, how we eat, how we play, mm. in the excesses and, and things that we do. Mm. But to say, oh, you take this thing. So if you have deficiency, if you are risk, at risk of a deficiency, then see your physician. If you eat well, then you don't need supplements. Okay. So a lot of those supplements are as scams, you know. Wow. And this is very expensive scam. Wow. Okay. <laughs> the, so the supplement industry has been exposed as a as a scam on tea or coffee. I love it. I love it. All right. So let us not get the supplement. No, I'm, if it's yeah. not prescribed. Yes. If it's not prescribed, but. Somebody just go in there and say, I'm buying this, I'm buying that, I'm buying that. You need to be careful. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, there's actually, you know, I say that because there's a narrative around, like, as you said, multivitamins and supplements that, you know, it's, you, uh, you know, essentially um, that you're buying life in a pill. You, you can't know, buy, you you can't buy health, health in, in a pill. pill, essentially. All right. Um, okay. Let's get into um, our final question. And that is the redemptive part of this conversation. And it's solutions. Now, I like that you mentioned that one of the problems... Um, surrounding one of the factors you know maybe surrounding self-medication is the fact that um physicians are leaving the country medical pr pr practitioners are leaving the country and it seems like there's not a proper setup to um, accommodate that vacancy what can the government do from your professional standpoint i, I think if since you asked it from the angle of um, self-medication i think so like i said it's, it's part of health seeking behavior of human beings. Okay. I don't think it's, it's a problem particularly of Nigeria. It's a, okay. it's a global it's problem. It's a global problem. Human beings. It's a human problem. Yeah, it's a human problem. If something is wrong with you, you'd want, like that's how, I think it's part of trial and error. It has its benefit. <laughs> Somebody taught one day, looked at a leaf and said, I'm going to cook this leaf <laughs> and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and some people die eating, yeah. the wrong, wrong, <laughs> eating the wrong mushrooms. Right. And some people say, okay, this yeah. is now food. And so, so I think it's, it's mm -hmm. part of the human nature that if you mm -hmm. think something is wrong with you, you'd want to help yourself to sort out that problem. But having said that, we, we need to recognize, like I said, so that's why we're doing this show, to educate yeah. people, for them to know uh, the right things, take the right step. If you cannot make the proper diagnosis, if you, your best bet is to meet someone that has been trained, that took years and years and years of learning uh, to become and to be able to look at your symptoms, look at what is happening around you, examine you. Sometimes they even run tests, right? To be able to say, this is what is wrong. I haven't run the test. They may not even be clear. They now run all that test. So can you not think that you cannot just do that by feeling? Doesn't make sense. So if it goes beyond common symptoms, right, that the, if you, that, and based on advice, common symptoms, this is happening to you, try to do this. If it goes beyond that, then go see your doctor. From your question of what can we do as a nation to improve the health of our people, I think it has to be an holistic approach. Mm. Yeah, it has to be okay. strengthening the entire health space. And I am doing what I can do, and that's why I agreed to come on show, and that's why we do what we do Thank in, you the, very in much. our company. Yeah. To educate people yes. with, with with education, if people know the proper things, they will be to be they will be less likely to make mistakes and do the wrong mm -hmm. things. So as we educate people, let's place a lot of premium on preventive health. Let's train people on the basic things that they should do on first aid. So we, nice. we can mm -hmm. actually go through the various problems that people have. And so if this happens, this is what you should do mm -hmm. as first aid, burns, stings, falls. Some people do funny things, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody's convulsing, somebody collapses, somebody suddenly collapses. The, 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 the response of people is to try to raise that person 
person up. Mm -hmm. And that's the wrong thing. If somebody mm -hmm. collapses, you want the person to lie flat, mm -hmm. not to raise the person right. up. Okay. Or somebody has an injury, and people carry the person anyhow. <laughs> so what is a partial cervical fracture, they make it complete and it becomes wow. become paralyzed. Wow. So, but like I said, mm. it will come with education. Right. So, and government can create, and I, they should create a framework to let people get access to healthcare. And of course, I can't say it, we won't finish without saying, let doctors, let's make, let's create incentives mm -hmm. to get physicians to, to stay back. That will be for our good. Dr. Rianne, I've learned a lot this one. I'm going to reduce my vitamin C intake because of you. Thank you very much, first of all. But, you know, more importantly, you know, I feel like the viewers, would, you know, there's the I've learned a lot this morning. I have learned a lot this morning. And not only that, I have, a, have had a lot of fun on this conversation. So fun fact about the last time on Dr. Gwenga Adebayo, he has never taken a drop of alcohol. That's correct, isn't it? I don't take alcohol. I wish I would never take it. No, I, I said you've never taken it. I, I think you said I, I, I don't take alcohol, but only communion is alcoholic. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't take alcohol. I, I'm not a social drinker. I don't yeah, drink alcohol. Yeah, it's not yeah. fun. Thank you very much for coming on the show this, uh, um, again. And we hope that you, will, you can actually come back and educate us. You know, these kinds of education, these kinds of conversations are very important, as you know, for the viewers and, and for healthy living, essentially. Thank you very thank much. You, that, thank you. Thank you, Adia. And thank you to the producers for having us. Yes, sir. All right. That is Dr. Winga Adebayo on the conversation on self-medication. This interview will be on YouTube at High Impact. Impact TV later on today if you want to rewatch take notes of some of the things that the doctor has, sta has stated you know and cut down your vitamin C and cut down on yourself diagnose